ओम ज्ञानतिरांधस्यानाजनशलाकय चक्षुरोन्मीलिता तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपादा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदातस्वामी नमस्ते नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातिदेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तबंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे उत्साह निश्चय धैर्य तत्त कर्म प्रवर्तना संग त्याग सतो वृत्ते सो वी हैव कवर्ड द फर्स्ट फाइव टुडे विल कवर द सिक्स वन एंड विद दिस विल कंप्लीट द बुक कॉल्ड भक्तिया लोक बाय श्रीला भक्ति विनोद ठाकुर सतोवृत्ति ही सतोवृत्ति और साधु वृत्ति मीन्स फॉलोइंग इन द फुटस्टेप्स ऑफ प्रीवियस आचार्य नॉन एज रीडिंग दिस आर्टिकल वंडरफुल थिंग्स दैट भक्ति विनोद ठाकुर एज गिवन एस टूडे इज क्लास विल मोर ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन नो दैन एनी एक्सप्लेनेशन दैट इज नीडेड बिकॉज इट्स सेल्फ एक्सप्लेनेटरी Now there are two kinds of sadhus. When we say sadhu vritti, there are two kinds of sadhus: householders and renunciates. So married people and the ones who are renunciants. Now, when we say vritti or occupation, we have to understand there are two two meanings of this occupation. One is propensity, and second one is lifestyle. I need not explain lifestyle. But propensity here means one's nature or swabhav. So the natural propen those natural propensities are living entities, dharma. So based on the propensities, he will act. So that's the point that is made. A very important point. Before reading this article, I used to always think that livelihood is occupation. But occupation has one of the element as livelihood. occupation basically means the activities that a living entity is supposed to do to purify itself to go back home back to godhead and one of the element of the occupation is livelihood but now people are interested in anything of going back home back to godhead so occupation synonym livelihood that's how it has become therefore here shila bhakti no thakur is saying by passing life in one's natural occupation one can attain devotional service free from the modes of nature otherwise one will fall into irreligion and be unable to make gradual advancement so whatever is our propensities our swabhava based on that we have to act and based on that how to act it is given in the shastra how to act and when someone does that the person gets purified free from three modes of material nature see as of now whatever bhakti we are doing it's there in three modes bhakti in ignorance bhakti in passion bhakti in goodness we have description bhagavatam also which comes here when someone utilizing one swabhava or doing activities according to one swabhava person can become free from the modes of material nature bhakti in pure goodness otherwise if one does not follow according to one's own swabhava the person will get into adharma that's the point that is made very important very beautifully here one point is made from bhagavatam therefore having achieved this human form of life which allows one to develop full knowledge those who are intelligent should free themselves from all contaminations of the modes of nature and engage exclusively in loving service to me krishna is saying this having gotten this human form render service unto me and people can become free from the modes of nature if they pass their lives do telling everything satvika objects activities time and place with the devotional service of the lord so the point that is made here is everything has to be dovetailed in service of the lord what all things have to be dovetailed in service of the lord satvika objects see very our acharyas are very precise he could have written objects he is writing satvika objects only satvika objects can be engaged in service of the lord second activities all our activities should be dovetailed third time 
and place that also be has to be, that also has to be dovetailed in service of the lord why is it that human form is called rare and here is an answer one of the answers only human beings are eligible for propensities in the mode of goodness in the remaining in that state they gradually become free from the modes see the satvika activities which are their activities in the mode of goodness only human beings can follow others cannot hmm. therefore human form is very rare and what are these uh, satvika activities the 30 common duties you know which are given in 7th canto shrimad bhagavatam 7th canto 11th chapter shloka number 8 to 12 these are the common duties or satvika duties which every human being is expected to follow just by doing these activities one will get purified hmm. for example satya satya means speaking truth hmm. speaking truth without distortion or deviation daya sympathy to everyone suffering now someone might say that uh, was speaking nicely speaking softly with low tone it's not my nature but by following these different 30 common duties given the person will rise above his current nature to the satvika mode or the mode of goodness like that you know many are given like austerity cleanliness tolerance control of mind control of senses like that 30 common duties are given now see one point we have to understand is that when we advance in bhakti these qualities will manifest but till the point these qualities are not manifesting on the power of bhakti one has to cultivate these qualities mm-hmm. why we have to cultivate these qualities because these qualities are favorable for bhakti if these qualities are not favorable to bhakti we don't care but these qualities are favorable to bhakti now to advance in bhakti these qualities are needed because these qualities will help us to avoid offenses follow the etiquettes and to develop taste you not know, towards the lord so satvika duties is mentioned now whenever we talk about duties there are 30 common duties but there are duties called varna duties and ashram duties also varna dharma ashram dharma so in 11th canto 18th chapter shloka 42 in bhagavatam it is given the main religious duties of a sanyasi is equanimity and non violence vana prastha austerity philosophical understanding householder to give shelter to all living entities perform sacrifices and brahmachari serving the spiritual master based on his instructions what about varna there are four varnas in the occupations in the four varnas you see when these descriptions are given easily we can make out he is not talking about livelihood he is talking about the essential activities that has to be done livelihood is one of them he can use one of it for his livelihood like for example a brahmana पठन पाठन यजन याजन दान प्रतिग्रह सो पठन पाठन स्टडी एंड टीच देन यजन याजन वर्शिप एंड टीच वर्शिप हाउ टू वर्शिप दान प्रतिग्रह गिव चैरिटी एक्सेप्ट चैरिटी आउट ऑफ दीज दे शुड मेंटेन देयर लाइफ बाय टीचिंग टीचिंग वर्शिप एंड एक्सेप्टिंग वर्शिप सो दीज आर द थ्री वेज द ब्राह्मण कैन सस्टेन हिमसेल्फ एंड देन इट इज एट क्षत्रिय देयर ऑक्युपेशन इज प्रोटेक्टिंग द प्रजा by punishing the miscreants and maintaining the life by taxation vaishyas krishi goraksha vanijya farming protecting cows and vanijya's business and the shudras here shila bhakti no thakur writes now i want to uh, get some other references also he says only serving brahmanas is the livelihood of the shudras occupation is they are supposed to serve everyone but for the livelihood they have to serve only brahmanas now many times people say no now everyone is a shudra no their livelihood is only by serving brahmanas mm-hmm. now another very important thing that is mentioned here is it should be understood that performing devotional service to shri hari is the only purpose of life and there is no other purpose literally everything that we are doing in our life should be to cultivate bhakti towards lord there is nothing in life apart from doing bhakti we have just incorporated this and that in our life but the only thing that we are supposed to do is devotional service that is what shila bhakti no thakur is saying but 
devotional service cannot be performed in pure goodness unless and until or just like that also cannot be performed unless and until the gross body and the subtle body becomes favorable to bhakti very very important point very important so how to make gross body favorable there is a need to accumulate a house household items grains and drinks subtle body one needs proper knowledge and a proper occupation in order to make the bodies completely favorable for devotional service there is a need to situate them above the modes of nature see why did he describe varnashrama 30 common duties and all that he described all that just to make us realize that this body and the subtle body the mind that is there that has to be made favorable to bhakti and by following all this once body and mind will become favorable to bhakti and with time it will get purified and the person will come to mode of pure goodness that's the point he is making by following this gradual process once body mind and environment becomes fit for devotional service now slowly he'll describe one after another now what is the need of varnashrama i am sure that now it's clear to make the body and mind favorable but along with that some points are made that the main purpose of varnashrama dharma is this by gradually following varnashrama dharma a human being will become eligible to perform devotional service so varnashrama is not devotional service by doing varnashrama person qualifies to do devotional service now uh, when chaitanya mahaprabhu was talking to ramananda rai so chaitanya mahaprabhu asked you know what is the topmost thing and at that time you know ramananda rai quoted this verse varnashrama charavatam purushena parapuman vishnu raradhyate panta nanyat tatto shakaranam so he says that this varnashrama system that is there is only meant to satisfy vishnu and chaitanya mahaprabhu said iha bhai aage kaho ar this is external now someone might say that bhakti not thakur is having nice logic and argument someone might say chaitanya mahaprabhu is saying it's external rejected so chaitanya mahaprabhu is saying that this is external he is not saying rejected if that was the case and why was chaitanya mahaprabhu so strong about establishing the principles that a sanyasi has to follow and householders have to follow why chaitanya mahaprabhu wants this to happen but it is external because it is not devotional service but it will help one to come to devotional service hmm. now therefore all these activities which are given according to one's uh, varna and ashram is meant to satisfy the lord and one thing has to be very clear that it is not based on one's birth again and again bhakti not thakur writes varna is not based on birth brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra he says if someone is born in the lower varnas and if he has got brahmanical qualities he should be considered a brahmana and he also makes the point that the members of four varnas and the lower castes should be eager to progress their sattvika nature doesn't matter you no know, are you in category of shudra vaishya kshatriya you have to come to the mode of goodness all the activities should be dovetailed like that to come to the mode of goodness very important now why is he speaking all these different things hmm. he is speaking all these different things because he is describing vritti occupation we are supposed to follow you know, the great souls of the past right sato vritti means sadhu vritti following in the footsteps of previous acharyas now he is describing vritti now after that he says what is sadhu vritti i was really happy to read this sadhu vritti means following in the footsteps of chaitanya mahaprabhu's followers this is called a staunch gaudiya vaishnav it's not that he is saying that any acharya of the past no following in the footsteps of chaitanya mahaprabhu's followers the conduct of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and his followers is meant to teach people so that conduct should be followed in all respects so what is proper occupation one should see the behavior of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu's followers then we can understand proper occupation then he divides into two categories as he already said two types of sadhus are there first type is grahastha second type is renunciants so now he talks about grahastha he says there so many grahastha devotees were there in chaitanya mahaprabhu's leela can you name few 
हाँ ओके रामानंद राय ओके शिवानंद सेन हाँ ओके गोविंद घोष श्रीवास पंडित सारूम भट्टाचार्य हाँ वो तो रिनन सेन था ना वेलकम ओके नित्यानंद भो बट नित्यानंद भो को फॉलो नहीं कर सकते बट यस सो श्रीवास पंडित वोट अबाउट अद्वैत आचार्य अद्वैताचार्य को भूल गए आप लोग सो दीज आर द डिफरेंट ग्रहस्थ एंड नाउ गिविंग देयर एग्जाम्पल वॉट ऑक्यूपेशन अ गृहस्था शुड फॉलो इज गिवन हियर इनफैक्ट एवरी सिंगल डिवोटी इन अस्कॉन शुड रीड भक्ति आलोक वेरी ब्यूटिफुली हु इज सपोज टू डू वॉट इज गिवन मे बी वाइट नॉट बी देयर इन दैट प्लेस और इन दैट सिचुएशन टू फॉलो द स्टैंडर्ड एज इट इज but at least the information should be there because one has to reach this stage very important now he starts speaking please hear this carefully you know very important for grast the devotees but even brahmachari should have information of all this first point he says is a householder should find a suitable wife so that she can support him in devotional service the wife kaisi hone chahiye suitable so that the wife supports him in devotional service here he is not saying beautiful wife you know extraordinarily magnetic etc no this is what he is saying now how to see the family members bhakti no thakur is saying while maintaining religious family life see the words that he uses is so wonderful while maintaining a religious family life it has to be religious a householder should fa- okay family life with one's wife sons and daughters are born in the form of krishna servants and maid servants so who are people in the family they are all das and dasi of not head of the family das and dasi of krishna and then he says to nourish them is called maintaining the family with this mood when he is taking care of the family it is called as maintaining the family now see grahasthas have got a lot of responsibility of the society because they are the only ones who are earning rest three are depending on the grahasthas brahmacharis are depending on grahasthas vanaprasthas are depending on grahasthas sanyasis are depending on grahasthas they are the only people sect of people or class of people who are allowed to earn the rest of the three are not supposed to earn their livelihood rest of the three only they are supposed to focus on bhakti full time bhakti so since only grahasthas earn they have got a lot of responsibility it is said and how they are supposed to earn piously accumulating wealth and that multiple times here he is repeating by following his prescribed duties a grahastha vaishnav should accumulate wealth for his maintenance he should not accumulate wealth by sinful means everyone is prohibited from corrupt earning or spending and workers are prohibited from accepting bribes so in both so we cannot give bribe or accept bribe as a grahastha that's the point and then one must be educated at a proper age one should not study atheistic literatures unfortunately now uh, so many literatures are atheistic so grahastha vaishnavas are expected that avoid those literatures and help your family members to avoid now as i already said they have great responsibility and their responsibility to, is to serve the entire society serving guest is the principal duty of grahastha this is the instruction of the lord lord is giving this instruction bhagavatam it is a principal duty of grahastha to serve senior persons again same point is repeated where it is said a householder is duty bound to work for the benefit of everyone and then it is said the duty of a grahastha vaishnav to show mercy on the poor and fallen the duty of a grahastha to work for the benefit of others even by giving up his own self interest many times people say that uh, grahastha life is simple and luxury no oh, it's not like that no. uh, both the ashrams you know they have their own austerities if we follow it nicely see a grahastha devotee if he is earning he has got financial independence he is supposed to use that financial independence to serve everyone else around and take care of them now here it is given what he should uh, be doing he should act with simplicity in dealing with people he should not get into cheating or duplicity or should not have duplicity in the heart 
See, all this description is not meant for an ordinary Graha Medhi. It is meant for a Vaishnav Grahastha. Not just Grahastha, Vaishnav Grahastha. Just Grahastha means he is following some principles of the you know, Grahastha Ashram. But here we are talking about Vaishnav Grahastha who wants to advance in Bhakti and attain Krishna. Hmm. Then it is said a householder should take the principles of renunciation to the heart. He should, be renunci he should have principles of renunciation within. But externally he should not dress as a renunciant. See, the saffron cloth is given a lot of importance, you know, according to this, these different articles. So, it's not about dressing oneself as a Babaji, dressing oneself as a Sanyasi. If a Grahastha wants to be renunciant, he should be internal, not external. Hmm. And then here it is said, in this practice of devotional service, duplicious association has been prohibited. Even while doing Sankirtan, one shouldn't be doing Nagar Sankirtan in the association of non-devotees. Bhakti Thakur is writing. Duplicious association should be prohibited. Hmm. And a householder should consciously give up such an association, especially association of three categories of people. Non-devotees, women or opposite gender. And the third one is the person who is overly fond of his wife. It should be avoided. Because grasthas have to come in touch with such people, so it should be avoided. A householder should not hanker for another's wife or prostitute. Now you see, if Bhaktivinoda Thakur is writing this for a Grahastha Vaishnav, what does that mean? Tendency will be there, but one should curb that tendency and make sure that he remains pure with his wife only. By the way, all these points which I am making, these points have got shlokas and those shlokas come from certain pastimes. Like for example, this one, one shouldn't hanker for one's wife or prostitute. Karl Krishnadas example is given here. That how Kal Krishna Das got into the addicted to gypsy woman and how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went and got him back. So that, from that uh, pastime, this particular principle has come. A householder should fully depend on the will of the Lord in all his activities. This is, some, for some, this is something for everyone. But since he is involved in earning his livelihood and taking care of the family, even while doing that, one should fully, fully depend on the will of the Lord. He is a real householder. Who is a real householder? Now there is something very difficult to digest. One who chants 100,000 names every day. 1 lakh means 64 rounds. Now Srila Prabhupada very mercifully he got this down. See Bhakti Not Thakur is saying and Srila Prabhupada got that down to minimum 16 rounds. One devotee was saying it was a disciple's course that was going on. And one devotee's question was if we chant more than 16 rounds, it will be an offense to Srila Prabhupada's instruction. It's not maximum, it's minimum 16 rounds. Hmm. Another very important thing, pure devotee should accept prasad in the house of such grahasthas only. See, pure devotees means we are aspiring to become pure devotees. Aspiring to become perfected pure devotees. So, in whose house we are accepting ahara is also very important. So one shouldn't accept food in anyone's house. Just, just like that. One should choose and accept in someone's house who is practicing bhakti in a very fixed up way. Hmm. And here it is said, it is the duty of Grahastha to constantly chant the holy name of the Lord and serve the Vaishnavas and the Lord with the help of his relatives and by the wealth he has earned through his pious life. He is supposed to do Vaishnav Seva. He is supposed to serve the Lord is supposed to constantly chant the holy name while doing all the activities. Such a high expectation from a grahastha. So every brahmachari should meditate on this, ki ye sab karna padega, better I remain in brahmachari ashram. Yeah. <laughs> and who, and when, what is this Vaishnava Seva all about? There are three categories of non-duplicious Vaishnavas. Kanishta Madhya Muttam he is talking about. So anyone who falls out of these three, Kanishta Madhya Muttam, who is below Kanishta, there is no question of serving. There is no question of thinking that that is Vaishnav Seva. And another very important thing for Vaishnav Seva, he says, that don't gather a lot of Vaishnavas in one place and try to serve. By doing that, you will commit offenses because you might take care of some people nicely, some people will not be taken care of nicely. Invite few Vaishnavas, honor them nicely, take care of them nicely. How practical, eh? how practical, Bhakti Not Thakur. 
Grasta Vaishnav should not desire to give up his body merely out of some sentiment or anger. Don't commit suicide. That's what he's saying. After fighting or something in the house, oh, I'll end my life. No. Grasta Vaishnav should feel satisfied with whatever food and clothing he gets without difficulty. One should never endeavor too much. Now, 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 which devotee restaurant should I go and eat? Now, which mall should I go and purchase a devotee attire? <laughs> Agrastha Vaishnava should perform devotional service with undeviated attention, knowing Krishna as the Lord of all. He should not disrespect the demigods worshipped by Smartha Sampraday. One pointed devotion towards Krishna without offending the demigods. This point is repeated multiple times because fanatically we might start offending demigods while preaching. So we should be very careful. This is an offense to offend a demigod. Krishna takes it as an offense. Then he says, a Grasta Vaishnav should respect and worship Tulasi. I was astonished to read this point because he is separately mentioning this point. That one should respect and worship Tulasi. Whatever show, show, sorry, social dealings a householder has to perform should be done while taking shelter of the holy name of Krishna. Whatever it is, inside house or outside house, whatever activities is there, one should do it by taking shelter of the holy name. And a grastha should accept a spiritual master. Qualification of spiritual masters are given separately in different different places. Basically, he should be a pure devotee of the Lord with pure character. And after the grastha devotee gets the faith, he should take initiation into chanting of Hare Krishna. And householder should be particularly careful not to commit offenses against the Vaishnavas or the holy name. So why it is said particularly for grastha devotees? Because they are the ones who want to invite Vaishnavas home and serve. So he says, particularly careful not to commit offenses against Vaishnavas. And now Krishna himself is speaking in Srimad Bhagavatam that how a householder should act. A householder should act until his natural propensity for enjoying sense objects is overcome and he fully attains the characteristics of a pure devotee. So what all things he is expected to do? Having awakened faith in the narration of my glories, being disgusted with all material activities, knowing that all sense gratification leads to misery, but still being unable to renounce all the sense enjoyment, my devotee should remain happy and worship me with great faith and conviction, even though he is sometimes engaged in sense enjoyment. My devotee knows that all sense gratification leads to a miserable result and he sincerely repents such activities. So Krishna is saying, you should follow, you should glorify me, you should do all that. Sometimes the devotee might fall into sense enjoyment. No problem. Why? Because he is going to, he knows that miserable result hoga. But he's pulled, so he did it. But he sincerely repents for such activities. Now another point that is made. That is, a Grasta Vaishnav must gradually acquire all 26 devotee qualities. Starting with Kripalu till Mauni. All the 26 qualities of a devotee, a Grasta Vaishnava should cultivate. Now, what does that mean? It means a renunciant already has it. What See, a Grasta Vaishnava must gradually acquire all these qualities mentioned in Chaitanya Chaitanya, 26 qualities. Like, for example, uh, humble, merciful, truthful, equal to all, faultless, magnanimous, mild and clean, etc. So it's expected that a renunciant already has these qualities. Hmm. Agrastha Vaishnava should be eager to associate with advanced devotees. Whenever some uh, sadhu comes, they should be very eager to associate with that sadhu. Out of all the process of devotional service, one should give earnest attention to five limbs. Sadhu Sangha Nama Kirtan Bhagavat Shravan Mathura Vasa Shremur Tera Shraddhaya Sevan Five. That is associating with devotees, Sadhu Sangha, Nama Kirtan, then Bhagavat Shravan, Mathuravas, and Deity Worship, Sri Murthira Shraddhaya Sivan. And then he says, Gradually one should diminish following of prescribed rules out of obligation and cultivate spontaneous attachment. So when someone enters Raganuga platform, then you know, these rules and regulations you know, are given up one by one. A Grastha Vaishnava should constantly, whenever it is said, rules and regulations are given up. It does not mean that he gets into adharma 
it has to be clear it means that lower things like this obligation of family that obligation of relatives etc that can be given up not that now four relative principles since i am in raghavnagar i can break those a householder should accept pure devotional service that is not based simply on religious sentiment he should be very much convinced and then he should follow not that you know my family members are following so i will do etc no he should be convinced if one desires krishna in all his activities then those activities are auspicious by endeavoring to gratify one senses and attain irrelevant fruits one becomes a materialist so all the activities of a grihastha devotee should be towards satisfying krishna and not satisfying one's own self that's the point or else the person will become a materialist now what is the difference between a householder and a renunciate here it is said the difference between them is there are different means of livelihood that's it if the home is favorable for a devotee's devotional service then he should not leave home for a grihastha devotee it is said it is his duty to remain a grihastha with detachment now how it is done it's a big thing to understand remain a grihastha with detachment but when the home becomes unfavorable for his service then chodo ghar ghar dwar chalo haridwar that's the point made here he becomes eligible to leave home now this is regarding grihasthas now get ready to understand the occupation of a renunciant now brahmacharis are aspiring renunciate so one has to aspire to come to this platform and i'm sure we know you know what are the what are the principles that chaitanya mahaprabhu wants or enunciate to follow and he starts with vairagi karibe sada nama sankirtan magiya khana kare jeevan rakshan so what a vairagi is sorry expected to do nama sankirtan sometimes sada always always chant the holy name of the lord and what he should eat he should beg some arms to eat and he should sustain his life in this way so it's not that beg uh, go and beg in the kitchen that give me some more gulab jamuns and red lettuce <laughs> here it's spoken about madukari and then he, he says i'll just skip the shlokas and the shlokas are very nice take it still i'll change the shlokas vairagira kritya sada nama sankirtan shaka patra phala mole udara bharan i think you understanding yes <laughs> so sada sankirtan and how should one fill the belly with whatever vegetables leaves fruits and roots are available jivher lal sai iti uti dhai shishno dhara parayana krishna nahi pai that person who subservient to one's tongue and who goes here and there devoted to his genitals and belly cannot attain krishna therefore he has to make sure that he lives a life centered around krishna and then he says gramya katha na shunibe gramya vartha na kahibe bhala na khaibe ar bhala na paribe sometimes we say you know devotees have only brahmacharis have only one sense gratification that is prasad eating and here chaitanya mahaprabhu is negating all that in so many shlokas see this point is very important do not talk like people in general or hear what they say there is no question of material talks like talking about politics talking about sports talking about uh, some bollywood or tollywood or whatever no we are expected to speak only about krishna amani manad hay krishna nama sada labe raje radha krishna seva manase karibe so wonderful do not expect honor but offer respects to all others therefore renunciates are compared to doormat anyone can come and wipe their feet and go and he is supposed to tolerate too much eh? when i heard this for the first time i said i'll not i'll not do this for sure but with time we are understanding that this is what we are expected to do because only in this state of mind this state of existence one can always chant the holy name of the lord and vraje radha krishna seva manasa koribe see in the mind will be able to serve the lord only if in the mind we don't have ego and pride such a important thing and so many wonderful points are mentioned here where he says 
that a renunciate should not live in his village with his relatives but obvious second he should not meet a king or a woman he should remain faultless he should not eat foods or accept goods from materialistic people there is no question only prasad that too in a house of a devotee who is a high class devotee high class means fixed up and then it is said it is not proper for a renunciate to ex- expect unasked for charity now sometimes you know uh, renunciate would go to someone's house and he's thinking ghar to bada lag raha hai iska 10000 to milega aaj or thinking ye gift chahiye wo gift chahiye no like no question of expecting for charity now renunciate should not construct big temples or residences by doing so he becomes entangled in household activities he should meditate on the service of worshiping govardhan shila basically he's talking about worshiping krishna devotees accept sanyas order of life only in such special situation a vaishnava born in a brahmana's family can take such sanyas when he leaves home but he should not accept limbs that are averse to his devotional service see one point which is repeated again and again is that devotee can maintain drida vrata as an renunciate who who is in the mode of goodness brahmana means what mode of goodness we are talking about aisa nahi ki brahman parivar mein janam liya ho mode of goodness so if you want to sustain brahmachari ashram and finally accept sanyas the person is expected you know to come to this platform of mode of goodness we should be very watchful of our activities one should associate only with devotees again he is mentioning this point and there is no question of uh, having mayavadi markings on the body and this point is made that regarding the pure grahastha vaishnavis how should one deal with pure grahastha vaishnavis because see one thing is there that the renunciates have to be away from matajis but they are not supposed to offend matajis that has to be very clear if we offend and say that mataji is a pure devotee of the lord then so this renunciate will get married immediately to some other materialist mataji and ruin his life so many many examples are there like that where a pure devotee mataji was offended and this sanyasi fell down he got married to a materialist and went out of bhakti so one has to be very careful so how uh, one has to uh, deal with matajis chaitanya mahaprabhu received them all all those matajis used to come just as he had in previous year the woman however saw the lord from a distance from a distance whatever dealings are there from a distance there is no question of intimacy the renunciate vaishnava is prohibited from all kinds of enjoyment no enjoyment including fragrant oil you remember any example from chaitanya charitamrit which talks about fragrant oil yes jagadananda pandit he got sandalwood oil for chaitanya mahaprabhu and chaitanya mahaprabhu rejected that and finally jagadananda broke that chodo you don't want because chaitanya mahaprabhu was saying put it in jagannath's lamp and he got so angry he said no i'll not do anything he took that and threw it down and broke it because he wanted chaitanya mahaprabhu to apply and chaitanya mahaprabhu said no i am a renunciant how can i apply that so there's no question there's no question of using anything fragrant yeah only narsim oil is that little bit that is applied it's not that we take narsim oil and apply that. <laughs> obviously we don't do that i'm just saying and even other things also a renunciate should uh, make sure like for example you know various other things that a person might use like perfumes deodorants you know some some lotions you know after shave before shave and then uh, you know something for the hair gel and you know, no enjoyment yeah whatever is there it has to be something that is minimized at a very very basic thing base no enjoyment a renunciate vaishnav is forbidden from hearing the singing of a woman i think this was very clear therefore that is the reason when whenever a mataji sings a brahmacharya is not expected to be there in that place except for the festivals because you don't have option and there is no place also to go anywhere but otherwise whenever there is option the person should leave that place mm-hmm. bedding a brahmachari or uh, sorry this is for renunciate i'm just I'm telling for aspiring sanyasis sitting in front of me so bedding it has to be a mat or something like that not a very high curlan mattress where you sleep nicely with soft pillow and all that no any example from chaitanya charitamrita 
అగైన్ చైతన్య మహాప్రభు జగదానంద పండిత్ జగదానంద పండిత్ సో దాట్ చైతన్య మహాప్రభు స్లీపింగ్ ఆన్ ద స్లీపింగ్ ఆన్ ద బేర్ ఫ్లోర్ ఈ గాట్ కాటన్ ఈ స్టఫ్ డెట్ అండ్ హీ మేడ్ అ నైస్ క్విల్ట్ అండ్ అ నైస్ బెడ్ విత్ పిల్లో అండ్ చైతన్య మహాప్రభు సైడ్ హఠా వేసుకో గోవిందకు దాటే వచ్చేసి అండ్ దెన్ గోవింద యూజింగ్ హిజ్ ఓన్ నైస్ ఇంటలెక్ట్ ఈ గాట్ ద ట్రీ బార్స్ హీ మేడ్ ఇట్ ఇన్ టు స్మాల్ స్మాల్ పీసెస్ ఈ పుట్ ఇట్ ఇన్ అ క్లాత్ మహాప్రభు దిస్ ఇస్ ట్రీ బార్ కొంది మేడ్ యూ స్లీప్ లైక్ దాట్ and a renunciate eats to keep the body and soul together again about eating see basically we are expected to follow this high standards if we want to become a renunciate we all are aspiring brahmachari is aspiring renunciates so we have to come to the standard because by coming to the standard a person can easily get develop attraction towards the lord yeah and whatever is mentioned for grahastas is expected that renunciates have already attained that because we have brahmacharya asham grahastha asham anaprastha sanyas so already the renunciant has come to that platform mm-hmm. now there are some things that both are expected to do grahasthas and the renunciates first one there is no duty in the age of kali other than chanting the holy names and mantras of krishna this is prime duty first point second one should accept a qualified guru third one should associate only with devotees that to sajatiya devotees very important point huh? we'll discuss some day about this point in great detail sajatiya devotees means the devotees with, with whom we have same temperament first point is gaudiya vaishnavas associating only with gaudiya vaishnavas other sampradaya might be bona fide but still we don't associate we associate only with you no know, devotees and in gaudiya vaishnavas we, uh, we associate with iskon devotees yeah so this point is very important and in the association of devotees in askon we develop thick bonding with those devotees with whom you know our bandwidth matches the mood matches hmm. not in terms of i like this particular sense gratification this devotee also likes so we have a tight bonding as i mean i'm talking on the devotional platform and then it is said one should not remain in a place where incompatible mixtures of mellows wherever there is rasabhas there's no question of remaining in that place hmm. yeah sometimes it happens you know where people start uh, rasabhas now i have to explain rasabhas it will take a lot of time um mixing dasya ras with madhuri ras or something like that yeah. one of the example is uh, one of the rasabhas can be said uh, now having balram and radha krishna in the same altar that is one of the rasabhas so like that so now that is still when it comes to altar and in the scon we take care of all that therefore we see that whenever we have radha krishna and chaitanya mahaprabhu we don't have nityan prabhu with that we we'll just have chaitanya mahaprabhu because that's rasabhas means nityan prabhu is another mode and you no know, these personalities are in other modes so something like that it's more deeper actually rasabhas is not so easy to uh, you know explain in one minute so some other day we'll discuss about this one should not okay one should carefully gather the good qualities one should be very careful these are the good qualities you know i want for myself so we should cultivate that with time and always he should be involved in preaching for the benefit of others a devotee be it grahastha or brahmachari renunciate doesn't matter preaching is very important and here it is said that we should become dear to the devotees of krishna because if we become dear to dear to devotees of krishna will become dear to krishna and one should have firm determination for one's attachment not towards lord chaitanya and one should teach others by one's example sometimes we should speak and preach but most of the time we should set example no question of associating with logicians and very very important para dukha dukhi one should feel really sad when others are sad and then it is said the need for a pure heart is described very very important that one should be clean externally internally one should give up envy or distress arising from seeing others prosperity another very very important point a devotee relishes rejoices when someone progresses not that he becomes envy and thinks how to pull that devotee down one must be a staunch follower of lord chaitanya in this entire article is like that so we are talking about sato vritti and whose vritti occupation of chaitanya mahaprabhu's followers 
for grastas those names were given i didn't ask who are the renunciates in uh, chaitanya charitamrita okay gadadhar pandit and haridas thakur swarup damodar chaitanya chaitanya mahaprabhu should come first <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In fact, all these principles that we read for renunciates is mostly pointing towards Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm. The devotee's faith in the conclusion of devotional service you now should be very clear. There should be total surrender towards the Lord. One should give up atheistic philosophies with repentance. If at all we have some subscription towards that, a devotee should always be neutral. A devotee should be afraid of insulting other Vaishnavas. Should practice forgiveness. and show mercy to others and should follow devotee etiquette and should consider the vaishnava's body as spiritual devotee should not have any faith in worldly poetry and shouldn't quote that in the class also yeah it is an offense to disobey the order of the spiritual master so basically these ten offenses a devotee should give up the desire for conquest i want to take over something or something like that and it should be clear with sambandha abhidaya prayojan devotee should forgive even his enemy a devotee must give up symptoms of pride such as desire for fame and cheating multiple times bhakti no thakur talks about this in this article a devotee must reject caste consciousness in his spiritual life this this also is seen in devotee circle huh? i am from a brahmana family how does it matter hmm. currently or a shudra hmm. in fact lower than that how does it matter you are from brahmana family so one should ask such question to oneself yeah so one should be proud of being from brahmana family or something like that a devotee should carry the burden of script shouldn't carry the burden of scriptures like an ass just having everything he should understand the purpose and implement that in day to day life a devotee should give up seva aparad naam aparad again it is mentioned if a person is internally situated as a vaishnav even though externally he maintains the attachment of sense gratification he is still counted as a devotee these statements give some hope in krishna consciousness <laughs> one shouldn't maintain false pride due to material education i am a btech mtech phd i was working here i was working there before no we are when we are there as devotees with devotees one should remain fixed in the principles of vaishnavism this is another important point in the devotee association a sinful person is the one who takes side of one vaishnava and condemns another hmm. such a person is vanquished so when two vaishnavas are fighting don't go in between only fear authority we have something to do there yes we can otherwise ha ah, ye sahi keh raha hai ye to aise hi bekar hai no such things shouldn't be done uh, this is also very important after taking initiation that is accepting the holy name of the lord one should not commit sinful activities you know we are very fortunate in iskon it's very strict for initiation if someone is supposed to take initiation it's very strict and a lot of things are done before and we become ready then we are giving an initiation we should be very very grateful to shila prabhupad or else you know what is the need then why he is writing like this do not commit sinful activities because people do commit they were committing so it's very important that we follow this a devotee shouldn't converse with atheists should give up relationships with non devotees no comparison between punya and punya activities and bhakti activities because bhakti is always greater and there's no question of associating with cheaters and hypocrites a devotee should constantly take shelter of the holy name while passing their lives without duplicity or sin very heavy statement constantly we should take shelter of holy name while passing life without duplicity or sin now please remember these two points in this way these are the different points you know that uh, he makes and finally he concludes in this article human beings should worship krishna by considering the natural qualities whatever natural qualities we have and accepting the livelihoods of the previous and the later mahajans what do you mean by previous and later mahajan previous to chaitanya mahaprabhu and later chaitanya mahaprabhu chaitanya mahaprabhu is center for us 
we say no bc and ad yes so for us chaitanya mahaprabhu it's not christ it's chaitanya mahaprabhu pure devotional service is proportionately enhanced by following a proper occupation otherwise it is never achieved so today it's very clear occupation does not mean livelihood livelihood is just one element of occupation but there are so many other things that needs to be done which is part of occupation and by that we can advance in devotional service thank you very much shila bhakti uno thakur ki shri bhaktialok ki jay jagat guru shri la prabhupad ki jay